Metal Tiger, uh, listed on the AIM market with the ticker MTR. We started life in mid-2014. We took over Brady Exploration, changed the name to Metal Tiger. Year of the Tiger, an Asian-focused business. And uh, we still have significant Asian interests, but today, of course, is about uh, Botswana. I am the warm-up act. Uh, and we have the, the meaty stuff, the, uh, the best performers on later, with Julian uh, giving us a presentation on what's happening actively on the ground. Metal Tiger has a significant position in the Botswana activities, uh, and it has a range of other interests as well. So I will briefly take you through those interests, and I want to convince you of our seriousness. Uh, many companies hope to get to the position we're in. You know, a full room, uh, people interested, dramatic trading volumes on the stock. Uh, this isn't the end of the road for us, this is the beginning. Uh, we are working far harder than we have ever done before. The team is growing steadily and we're investing a lot of time, energy and money in building a big company for the future. Uh, and please don't feel that because we've got to this point now with a bit of success on the market that we're sitting back, we're not, we're accelerating what we do. Okay. There's the disclaimer. <coughs> As I often say, please don't believe the disclaimer. Uh, please don't believe anything I say, anything I indicate, the facts on the screen or anything about this presentation. Please do your own research. For all of these companies, question them. On the RNS's, my mobile number is at the bottom. We are entirely accountable for our actions. You must contact us if you have any questions or queries and demand answers. And do that for all the AIM resource companies you invest in because many of them uh, will shy away from active communications, but we will not. Whatever stage in the cycle we're in, we will answer your questions on a one-to-one -one basis. We're a little bit slow at the moment, but we're quite busy with things, but we will get back to you eventually. Why we feel we are investable? Uh, the resource sector, we think, is at or around a cyclical low. We've had this on the screen for a few months. We're pretty convinced we've seen the bottom now, but we might be wrong. It might be a temporary blip, but generally, based on past history, this looks pretty much like we're recovering now uh, from a number of different perspectives. And if you uh, have a copy of the Financial Times and a set of darts, and you throw them at the resource company section, in the recovery phase, then you're going to stand a good chance of making some decent gains. Uh, you will find that all the boats rise when the tide comes in, but you kind of want the speed boats, the well-aligned, well-focused, driven, hard-working companies, because they will deliver the fastest and the highest returns at most stages of the cycle. We want to be one of the speed boats, if I can sound a little uh, crass. Uh, we're focused on strategic project investment. Mm. This is what we do. Our desire from the off was to find big projects. Not the run-of-the-mill stuff that will pay director salaries and uh, keep the bills paid and then keep the public company running. The stuff that can change people's lives. We've got investors who in the last few weeks have contacted me and said how the rise in the price of Metal Tiger has made significant changes to their lives. Uh, and really change their ability to do things with their lives. And this is what we are all about. Now, as directors of public companies, uh, we can't sell the stock, which is a bit of a problem when your share price goes up. And if the share price goes up a lot, lot more, it's even more of a problem. We don't see this as a long-term business. It's a cyclical sector. You cannot sit and ride this all the way through because you'll see the share price go from a penny to a pound and back down to probably half a pence at the end of the road. We have to find a way to crystallize value and to distribute that value amongst the shareholder base. And if we hold enough shares along that road, then we get the dividends too and the benefits from the process too. So we are looking for exits in the future and we're looking at some point to crumple this down to the tiniest possible vehicle, uh, find the next sexy uh, uh, you know, a sector, and maybe it will be sheep farming, and we might change the name of the company to Metal Sheep. <laughs> and then we'll run away into the distance. Uh, I'm sure Terry wants his own yacht. Uh, Cameron wants a flash car, uh, and because I've seen his current car, and it's quite flash, but not flash enough. And, uh, and that perhaps uh, I need to pay for a divorce. <laughs> my, my wife is not watching this video. <laughs> 
Uh, we have a diversified portfolio. It's important for us to have that. It gives us the edge. It means we're not overly exposed, we're not too risked. We have very active news flow. We are criticised for too much news flow. I don't care. We uh, come from the staple of private investors, active investors who want to know about the company. Uh, we will be releasing material news on a regular basis all the time. And if people don't like that, well, that's their problem. It's not ours. You need to know what's happening in the companies that you invest in on a regular basis. Because we have a lot going on, we have a lot of news. And that will carry on. Uh, we have uh, very good working capital management. I can't tell you how uh, good it feels to have a few million quid of working capital. Now, I can say that because anyone can work it out from what's happened within our business. We've been helped tremendously by the rising share price uh, of MOD, where we have a, a, a significant holding just under 5%. By a rise across our portfolio, by uh, Terry's wife putting in some money, £132,000 recently, uh, and by the warrants being exercised uh, that we had from the placings in 14, uh, in 15 and 16. So we're in a strong position, but we're not sitting back. We're not spending the money willy-nilly. We're really focused more than we ever have been before on generating value and driving the value of this company up. We have two divisions, Metal Projects, which has been our focus for quite some time, and uh, Asset Trading. We'll run through both of those very quickly, and then I'll pass you on to Julian, who's far more entertaining than I could ever possibly be. And he's shaking his head now. <laughs> You've got to make sure the, the speakers that follow you have a difficult time, you see. It's most important. Uh, here's our significant shareholder list and our, our general data. <coughs> You'll see uh, that the directors have a fairly uh, decent interest in the business. Uh, and it's an interest that we've tried to grow. It's a bit tricky because as a public company with active news flow, we're in close periods all the time. But we do try and build our position within the business. We also have the uh, management performance options. When we issue options, we've issued them at all around two times the share price at the time. So we're not wimpy and we do have a crack and we want to give people confidence that we're not giving management free divvies. Uh, we have to work hard to achieve a return. We're in the money at the moment, but the more we can get our share price up, then the more in the money we will be. <coughs> Here's the board and management. We have uh, at the head of the company, Terry Grammer, who sat down here drinking some lager. He uh, will answer any of your questions. He's very, very honest. Prepare yourself. He will not give you, uh, I've got to be careful what I say, uh, anything but the straight truth. But he does that within the company as well. And that is a wonderful asset to have. He has a history of tremendous successes, dramatic share price rises, dramatic delivery for investors. Uh, so far, he's delivering for Metal Tiger. We, we hoped he would, uh, and that seems to be the case. And uh, based on past performance, we still have some way to go. So we'll see how it pans out. I'm a chartered accountant. Uh, at the moment, I'm a chief executive officer of Metal Tiger, and uh, we have so much on the go. It's a great job, but it's a hugely busy task, and we're building what we hope is a tremendously large company. Cameron Parry, I took over the role of CEO from Cameron. He did so much of the work, and he's still working. Can't get rid of him. He's <laughs> hanging around doing things, which is a bit unusual because most non-executive directors just sit there and come to board meetings and take the fees. Uh, it's not what happens in Metal Tiger. Uh, Cameron's in the room, if you could raise your hand, sir. Available to answer all complicated questions. Uh, Alex Borelli <coughs> is our uh, non-executive director number two, and he is the staple public company man. He makes sure we do everything right and we behave ourselves appropriately. Now, uh, in addition, we have Michael McNeely, our company secretary. If you're in the room somewhere, could you raise your hand? Oh, he's gone to the toilet. Ma 
I can't repeat what's just been said on the front row. He's, uh, <coughs> Michael's around, you'll know him because he's far too young to be a company secretary. Uh, but he's, he does a fantastic job and he didn't realise the warrants were all going to crystallise at the same time, <laughs> causing him endless grief because each warrant exercise is about eight pieces of paper. It's a wonderful experience to, to see. Anyway, uh, in addition to that within the room we have Nick O'Reilly, our competent person. If you could, uh, there we go. Hello everyone the best looking CP you could have, uh, and just been to Botswana. If you want to ask him lots of questions, tricky questions, he loves that kind of thing. Ask him for his opinion about things and he'll shake in his boots, but no, he will give you an honest interpretation. Uh, we have Alex, Alex, our JV partner. If you could stand up, sir, from Spain. If you want to know about Spain, Alex is your man. More enthusiastic, a gentleman I've never met who loves the Spanish and his Finnish interests through MEM Finland. Uh, and there were various other people in the room uh, to chat to you over the course of the evening. <coughs> okay, there's the fundamentals. Uh, we were fighting a long time to get out of the trading range that our beloved marketplace had for us. You know how the market works. It's not all fair and square. And we had to do a bit of scrapping, but eventually, with a barrage of news flow, uh, then we managed to break out of the trading range and start to get some decent trading activity going on. Fortunately, that happened around the same time as the Botswana progress <laughs> really started to kick in. And also, we signed the, uh, the deals in Thailand uh, with uh, our partners over there, uh, Southeast Asian Mining. Uh, and recently, we've signed the uh, three-month standstill agreement on the mine. So, uh, lots of activity, plenty, plenty more to come. But the, the activity levels and the better market conditions and the barrage of news flow from the company managed to break us out of the initial range uh, and of course we feel excited about the future we, we haven't changed in terms of we don't look at the chart and think blimey we've done it we think we're in process and there's a way to go so metal projects uh, there's a summary of our projects uh, Thailand Spain Botswana Russia Tanzania uh, we'll run through each of those briefly in a second if you want to know any more specific detail, there are people around the room who can help you. Uh, and if you have any questions afterwards, just send me uh, an email or send me a text and I'll give you a call back. Thailand. Uh, our focus in Thailand has been a changing one over the last couple of years. We came to market with some Thai interests. They've morphed, evolved, developed, changed and so on. And we now have a clutch of different interests in different uh, areas of the country. We have uh, licenses and license applications, but our overriding focus is on a silver lead zinc mine, which is northwest of Bangkok. Uh, it was a mine that was operating uh, for quite some time and uh, went into mothball status <coughs> effectively since 2002. Let's see where we are. Before we get on to the detail of that, we have an interesting Thai team. Uh, we believe in all of our joint ventures. You have to remember we're a, a, a UK uh, AIM investing company, which means that we have to joint venture. We can't operate our own projects. It's quite useful because it means we can operate in various jurisdictions and we can, uh, as long as we have a very strong team on the ground in those jurisdictions, then we can have some reliance on what's happening in these various parts of the world. In Thailand, here's the team. Endless years of experience. Uh, a very capable managing director who understands the Thai system very, very well, has a Thai wife and has been there for a long period of time. He is Thai, but he's actually Canadian really. Uh, we have an exploration manager who for 20 years was working in Bangkok as a, uh, believe it or not, zinc uh, and copper trader. He understands the commodities marketplace and trading. That's quite useful when you have a silver lead zinc mine uh, that you're focused on. We have uh, uh, Surapol, who handles our permitting, who has worked in the, uh, in, the in the industry itself, in the mines ministry, and has extensive experience and contacts, can help us with our permitting process as we try to get everything moving forward. We have Walter Grease, who's the mine manager who ran the mine we're about to talk about for 30 years. And uh, we, we have a range of additional staff members who have skills and capabilities, including Jatarong from a geological perspective, uh, on the ground. Operating in Thailand with, uh, with the team is a very cost effective way to do business and we have huge, huge amounts of opportunity. We are one of the few companies actually spending money. 
and that's uh, for the geological potential is quite amazing but as Thailand opens up and becomes increasingly more friendly uh, and attractive to foreign direct investment we are really in the strongest possible position here's the uh, here's the mine we're focused on this is a little unusual uh, it's hard to describe uh, the, the almost perfect nature of this from our perspective this is a mine that was operating for decades uh, it is a high-grade silver lead zinc mine uh, it has endless kilometers of underground tunneling already hewn out of the, the rock uh, 12 to 13 years of estimated mine life plenty of potential to add more with a bit of internal drilling plenty of potential to add more in the surrounding areas because it's part of a very large system so this is a mine that could operate for a long period of time uh, on site there is uh, various infrastructure roads and so on we're a little bit little bit concerned about the road access from the main highway up to the mine itself until we went up there a few weeks ago and had to wait for an hour whilst the local council were laying a concrete road so it, it's almost Monty Python-esque in the sense of everything that you could possibly imagine and want is, 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 is in place for us including a processing plant it's been uh, mothballed for a while and it needs refurbishment rehabilitation but it's all there you need to clean off some of the rust and change some of the parts but it's there so essentially this is mine permitting process followed by an investment in rehabilitation and then you have a, an operating silver lead zinc mine the uh, the mine is substantial in size uh, there is a football field in the middle of the mine camp the reason why is this will employ 400 people uh, if it comes back into production mm. You can imagine the impact that that will have economically on the community. So we're hugely interested in bringing this back because it has great commercial potential. It can throw off free cash flow. It has a huge positive for the local economy. And that helps in terms of getting permits through and helps in terms of moving forward on the ground because it will have such an impact. And we're working with the Thai uh, family who own the mine to find the most efficient and effective route forward because they want it back into production too. And we have a range of information, data, capabilities and all sorts to help out with that process. Now, we made a major step forward recently because we signed a three-month standstill agreement on the mine uh, with a view to completing due diligence and formulating a joint venture agreement to take this forward with the family. So we're at a very progressed, uh, advanced and active stage at the moment. Uh, and we back out to Thailand on a regular basis to push it forward, one step at a time. But the planning for the permitting mm. and for the rehabilitation of the mine is extensive and advanced. There's a few more pictures. They're all in your uh, brochure. I dare say you probably can't see them <laughs> from the screen. Uh, but this is very, very, very uh, advanced project and it's ideal for our company as we move forward. Uh, Spain. Alex can answer all your questions on Spain. Spain was the, a project we took on in early 2015 because we were so impressed with the commitment mm. of our partners there. Alex and Igor who run the team over there. We uh, took on some licenses prospective for tungsten and gold. We uh, asked Alex what he wanted. He said can we drill? Uh, so we bought uh, a small drill rig and we started punching <coughs> holes in the ground. We don't believe in hanging around and doing very light work in the hope of raising capital on the back of a few you know, hefty grades. We believe in doing some real operational work. So we punched holes in the ground, 20, 30 meter holes, and Alex found lots and lots of tungsten. And uh, some pretty high grade mineralization too. Ask Alex about Spain. It's a hugely interesting story. And I don't want it to get swamped by the Thai <coughs> developments and by the Botswana developments. Spain is a significant key project for our company. And we're working with Alex to find ways to build on that and to take uh, the Spanish interest forward. Uh, we think there's a great opportunity to build a super substantial uh, exploration development and potentially production business in, in Spain over the next few years. There's a few of the, uh, the, the results and so on and a little bit more information, but as I say, Alex is, is your man for finding out more. <coughs> Botswana, I will say very little about Botswana, uh, other than uh, Julian will, will take you through the details. Uh, back in 2015, we were offered the opportunity to participate in this project. Uh, Terry, who looks at all of our projects and all of our suggestions, and I can tell you, says no. 
to 99 percent of what we put in front of him it's a very very difficult process when you spend hours looking at something putting it in front of terry and he says no he actually applies two words to the no but for the sake of the video i can't possibly say them unless we can edit no. uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, with regard to botswana there was never a question it was obvious from the off, and with Terry's uh, working relationship with Julian, they've worked together in the past, there was that strong degree of trust, and we carried on and worked together. The Botswana authorities are very disciplined and rigorous, and we had to go through a long, complicated due diligence process over a number of months. Uh, we promised that we would be active on the ground from the off, and within, I think, a week of the final ministerial approval, we were drilling. As I say, as a company, both uh, Metal Tiger and MOD mm. are keen on active, proper work, and we've got cracking from the off. The results have been exceptional. Uh, you don't find opportunities like this very often in the world. Uh, and so <laughs> we, we are fortunate to be in the position that we, we are. We know we're fortunate. We're working very hard to increase the rate and pace of developments on the ground. We started with one rig, we're now up to three rigs, we're uh, expanding and growing and the data will flow in thick and fast. This is hugely exciting. Uh, I'm a bit dubious of geologists, <coughs> which I shouldn't really say as you know, the chairman sat on the front row, but I believe it's important to double and triple check and anyone I ask about this, inside the business or outside, the same message comes back. This is really, really interesting, exciting, exceptional really positive data. There, there's no negativity around this uh, in the slightest and we're, we need to build that data and we need to punch that message out to market on a regular basis but we're with the right partners. It's been a fabulous working relationship thus far. I'm not going to say any more because Julian will smile wryly at me and I'll be uh, in trouble and let him take you through this story but this is a once in a lifetime start off for us and, uh, and I hope that we will, uh, we will see the same degree of positivity in the results that we've had so far in the future. Nothing is certain in life, but this is hugely interesting. R Russia, we were very fortunate to have a good relationship with uh, Eurasia Mining, maybe because we put some money in to the stock. And okay, some people might say that putting converting warrants at a penny a share when the current share price is 0.65 was a mistake. But you know, we have to take these things on the chin. Christian Shafaletsky is in the room. Sir, if you could put your hand up. If you want to know anything about Russian gold, let me tell you there's something interesting happening in the world. I was with a, a substantial, uh, how can I say this, fund manager earlier on. And he said to me that the Russian side of the, of the business intrigues him. He's really interested in it. He thinks that Russia is about to experience the contrarian turnaround in terms of investment. Uh, and he feels that the projects in Russia and the opportunities in Russia are immense. Christian and Eurasia mining might be right in the right place at the right time, ready to take advantage of that. Uh, we're fortunate because we had an agreement with Eurasia when we funded originally in December 14. I think so, yeah, December 14, uh, that we would participate equally on the projects that they, uh, they brought to us, if we so chose. And with the Seminovsky tailings project, it's a no-brainer, because with an MPV around $24 million and with an initial commitment cost of $100,000 uh, and a potential participation of 33.5% for Metal Tiger, it was something we had to do. The data has been getting stronger and more interesting as we go along. It's the first project, and there may be more. Uh, we're working with Eurasia to push this forward. It will be very, very interesting to see how it develops. And there are a number of things happening in the background that hopefully over a period of time we can articulate to market. I think people will like it. And just because we have you know, the, the major projects in Botswana and Thailand doesn't mean that you cannot generate significant opportunity and this one uh, is something that drew us in from the start and if we can do more of these it will help our business grow uh, it has the opportunity to bring in significant day-to-day -day working capital for us and cash flow which is very significant in our type of business uh, tanzania the uh, <coughs> we, we signed a 
joint venture agreements with Kivo Mining covering uh, two particular areas, uh, Moragora Gold and uh, Pinewood uh, Uranium. And we've been working with Kivo for some time on those projects. Uh, <coughs> we've been a little bit shy of news to market recently, but one hopes there should be something coming out to market in the relatively near future uh, to update on how we're going uh, with those particular interests. Uh, asset trading. <coughs> we were told, we've been told over the last six to 12 months that we shouldn't really asset trade uh, and that we should focus on our projects. I presume that was by market makers wanting us to be entirely beholden on the market uh, for placing so they could uh, short the heck out of us and, uh, and get stock cheaply and make a fortune. Uh, our first investment uh, in Kibo Mining, we, we turned 150 grand into a profit of over a million quid. So, uh, and Christian is the chairman of Kibo Mining, so thank you very much, sir. That was a great start. It gave us seed capital for our projects. We were a little slow on, on asset trading whilst we were building our projects because we had to, you have to focus on certain things at certain times. But we've never wanted to walk away from asset trading. We can make money trading shares. This is the model. We identify undervalued opportunities. Almost, you can take out your darts, as I said before. But we want to find this, the, the, uh, the companies that have great stories, great potential for liquidity, for the market to engage with them and for the share price to rise. So all the companies we've invested in to date have that particular model. We're primarily focused on equities and warrants, but we have a few other interests, royalties and so on, in the background. We don't talk about asset trading on a day-to-day -day basis. We're, we're focusing that on the half year and full year. Uh, and the reason is that unless we're required to disclose because of regulatory reasons, we don't want to tell the market our position. There's the, uh, the companies we've invested in. Uh, since we started this process in late 2014, Kibo, Eurasia, Ariana, ECR Minerals, Greatland Gold, uh, the most recent one obviously being Greatland Gold where we've gone on the board and the chairman of Greatland Gold, Andrew Bell, is sat just over there, sir, if you uh, could raise your hand. Now I know lots of investors want to speak to Andrew. <laughs> And I presume that's why he sat by the door. <laughs> but let me tell you this, I can promise you that we have worked with all sorts of company directors over the years. And uh, Andrew is full of energy, full of life, full of ideas. I've said for some time now that he is the recovery man. And uh, I've always believed that. It was Andrew's performance in, with Red Rock Resources that enabled me to pay for my first divorce. <laughs> And I haven't told too many people that, uh, uh, but I'm absolutely uh, delighted that he's with us tonight. We are working really hard on Greatland Gold together. Uh, Alex Borelli and I have gone on the board there, and we will make that company a success and make a lot of money for Metal Tiger shareholders in the process. Uh, we've invested 1.4 million pounds since we started. We're probably one of the most active investors on AIM in the small cap space. More deals will follow. We pick the companies that have dramatic recovery potential, dramatic, and at this point in the market cycle, mm. it's going to be interesting. So please keep an eye out for further deals and transactions. They don't take an enormous amount of time to do because we know the market very, very well. We've been working closely with a lot of these companies uh, as investors over the years, so we know where to go. Mm. Uh, here are our warrant uh, holdings. We're building up a bank of warrants. These are blue chip opportunities for the future for us to generate cash and working capital. Uh, we uh, are very anti heavy dilutive placings. Uh, we've said this many, many times. We will not cut the legs from underneath our existing investors, no matter what the city norm is. We do not do that. Uh, because if you don't have faith in us, if we do that to you, you, you will be very reluctant to stick with us in the future. Now, we've always said we will place when we need to, when we uh, want to, on sensible, reasonable terms. We're in a hugely positive working capital position. It's nice when you've got a few million quid that you can play around with and you don't have to worry about funding and financing. But we are determined to also trade up our working capital by making money through the deals that we do. So we will see more deals. And believe you me, when we put the money into them, we, we have a, a thorough, extensive knowledge of that company and its, and its future. And on occasions, we have to you know, help out a little bit, and we will do in the future with regard to uh, management-related matters, strategy, communications, and all the rest. 
Uh, but these are great, there are a ton of great opportunities in the market and we will tap into some of them going forward. If we can generate a few million quid of extra working capital in a reasonably short period of time, it all helps our business. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, we think we're at or around or actually probably coming out of the resource sector uh, cyclical pullback. It's been a long time. I've been so wrong for so many years. It's embarrassing. I keep saying to people, recovery, recovery, recovery. We, uh, but it feels now that we're actually on the right road. And when you're, I actually thought about biotech stocks a few months ago. I started to look at biotech stocks and I thought, this is the bottom. Because I, I, I'm the bu most bullish person for our sector I know. And if I'm thinking about <coughs> investing in clinical phase two trials of, <laughs> you know, I don't know, umpa lumpa man flu, then, <laughs> just hang on don't move so I, I hung on and didn't move uh, and uh, we, we have high potential projects uh, Mr. Grammar is not known for his uh, minor projects he's known for his big big wins and the company is not tolerant of, uh, uh, of small opportunities we want to build big things now there's two ways those come one is with big large projects uh, standalone and secondly by building a clutch of smaller projects in the same area as we're doing in Spain and working with the great people to build a big business. Uh, we think it's uh, a wonderful time in the equities to generate value, to trade shares, to have warranties, uh, warrants and royalties. Uh, the pipeline of opportunities we have is astonishing and we will feed some of those out into other vehicles as time goes on and generate cash, shares, and uh, warrants for the business and build our working capital. We're not going to waste the work we've done just because we've got a couple of major projects emerging. We're going to carry on and get value for everything. Uh, we're seeking a high growth rate. Uh, I can't tell you what we want to achieve inside the business because I would be in trouble. Uh, but uh, we have aspirations. We're working very, very hard. All members of the team are doing that at the moment. We want to build this thing into a much bigger company. We've changed offices. It is slightly swisher, but it's very cost effective. It gives us all the facilities we need. We're increasing our staff base. We've got the right people. We've got a chief financial officer, a full-time company secretary and compliance uh, manager who handles all of our commercial contract matters as well. Mm. Full administrative support. We've got the right advisors around us and they give us tremendous support. We, we, if we want to build a, a 250 million pound business, we have to behave like one. And that's exactly what we're doing at the moment. Uh, we're in the build phase and we're building that team. Uh, we're absolutely keen on exit strategy. Don't expect to see us at the other side of the cycle. We will be long gone. And uh, Terry, as he said, he's on his yacht, a uh, nice big yacht uh, with, a, with a free running supply of lager. And uh, we will have uh, an opportunity along the way to recognize significant gains and crystallize. And when we can do so, particularly as we approach what we think is a rather toppy resource sector market in a couple of years, three years, four years, whenever time, we will readily seek to distribute those gains out to our investor base. And we don't know when those moments will come, uh, if it's soon, if it's near term, medium term, long term, but we will do that and make sure that everyone benefits by buying in and holding in our business. And that is uh, me. Further information on the screen.